Hey everyone, Rick Balkin, Educational Research Design, School of Education at the University of Mississippi. I'm going to walk you through an exploratory factor analysis, and we're going to use data from an instrument I created called the Crisis Stabilization Scale that evaluates the extent to which adolescents uh, who are in crisis uh, meet therapeutic goals to help alleviate that crisis. Um, the, the instrument um, looks at uh, items such as uh, the client is no longer a danger to self or others, or the client is open to hearing feedback related to problems in their life, uh, as well as an appropriate service or resources were identified by the client, and the parent guardians have access to support outside the immediate home environment, or the client has access to support. And so we have these 25 therapeutic goals that look at various aspects of client stabilization. And we want to run an exploratory factor analysis to see how many factors emerge. Um, I'm going to do this using JASP. And so let me share my uh, JASP screen with you. Uh, here, uh, I've put my 25 items into the uh, exploratory factor analysis uh, uh, module. And uh, I, I moved my 25 items here. We're going to extract the factors using parallel analysis. Uh, I believe that any factors that emerge will be uh, correlated. So we're going to do a ProMax rotation using maximum likelihood method. I also want to produce a structure matrix and in addition to my factor loadings, uh, sometimes referred to as a pattern matrix. We're going to use 0 0.40 as a threshold for our factor loadings. I want to look to see if my factors are correlated, which I think they will be. And uh, uh, we'll produce a scree plot and as well as uh, uh, check our assumptions for uh, fit and sphericity. So um, starting with the KMO test, which uh, evaluates um, partial correlations and uh, whether or not those partial correlations explain the factors uh, between each other, so the partial correlations of the items to the factors. And we expect a, a degree of overlap um, and that factor analysis will be useful in addressing that overlap. Um, the Bartlett's test of sphericity, sphericity uh, evaluates uh, whether or not our, uh, our variables are related or not. If they're unrelated, the, 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 the test will be uh, not significant. If they're related, the test will be significant, which is what we want. We expect our items to be measured in a, a similar construct. Uh, going back to our first test, our KMO test, um, uh, we see an uh, overall value of 0 0.938. 0 0.80 or higher is considered good. 0 0.50 or below is considered bad. So uh, this is good. And we believe that factor analysis is appropriate. And our Bartlett's test is significant. And so we meet this assumption as well. Um, so let's look at our factor loadings. And we want our, our factor loadings to all be over 0 0.40. Two factors emerged, uh, items 1 through 18, which were all coping items, and items um, 19 through 25, which were all commitment to follow-up items. So if I were to show this to you, um, notice here that uh, items uh, one, like the client is no longer a dangerous self to others, and 18, the client was willing to explore alternatives that led to unhealthy or dangerous behaviors, and then 19, the client agrees to attend follow-up services. The client and family have identified adequate resources to follow recommendations, and so we see this break from coping skills to commitment to follow-up, and our factor analysis is picking up on that, so that's really cool uh, that, that we have uh, that both theoretically and uh, statistically, we're seeing the same thing. And so we see this two-factor model. Um, but these uniqueness indices are kind of low. And the reason is, is because um, the items 
do cross load. They, 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 they correlate. These, the, the structure matrix shows the correlations to the factors. And you notice that the items do correlate strongly on both factors, but more strongly on their designated factors. So that's a good thing. So, um, and then you can see that through this uh, EFA, we've accounted for 71% of the variance in the model with both factors, and then our factors were correlated. So um, theoretically, our theory of, of how our items broke apart aligned with the statistical uh, loadings that we uh, had hoped to see. Um, the items aren't particularly unique. They do cross load. Um, that's okay. Uh, we are still accounting for 71% uh, of the variance in the model. So uh, uh, that is uh, the exploratory factor analysis for you. Reach out to me at edres at olmiss.edu if you have any questions.